Good morning, and welcome to today's Change of Responsibility Ceremony for the Senior Enlisted Advisor to the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and Retirement Ceremony in honor of Sergeant Major John W. Troxell, United States Army. Please silence all cell phones and other electronic devices at this time. The troops representing the Armed Forces of the United States and participating in today's review from left to right are the United States Army Band, under the direction of Command Sergeant Major Julian Ayers and led by Drum Major Rob Moore. Elements of the Armed Forces Honor Guard include the Marching Platoon from the Army's 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, led by First Sergeant Jack Wheeler. The platoon sergeant is Staff Sergeant John Robinson. The next element online is the United States Marine Honor Guard, led by Corporal Hunter Smart. The platoon sergeant is Corporal Jose Soto. The next element online is the Navy Honor Guard, led by Chief Petty Officer Andrew Klink. The platoon petty officer is Petty Officer Kenneth Knox. The next element online is the United States Air Force Honor Guard, led by Master Sergeant Jason Prophet. The flight non-commissioned officer is Technical Sergeant Curtis Dowdy. Following is an element of the United States Coast Guard Honor Guard, led by Chief Petty Officer Monica Spies. The platoon petty officer is Petty Officer Christy Rivera. The element to the front left, dressed in the Continental Musician's uniform, is the United States Army Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps. During the American Revolution, musicians wore the reverse colors of their parent infantry unit. The men and women of the Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps maintain this tradition by wearing red coats instead of infantry blue. The Corps is led today by Drum Major John Parks. Ladies and gentlemen, moving into position is the joint staff for today's ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, moving into position is the Commander of Troops for today's ceremony, Command Sergeant Major Edwin T. Brooks, Command Sergeant Major, 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard. Since the days of the American Revolution, the colors have been one of the most important elements of a military unit. Therefore, taking the center of our formation in just a moment is an Armed Forces Color Guard bearing the national color and the service flags of the Army, Marine Corps, Navy, Air Force, and Coast Guard. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the advancing of the colors. Advance the colors!
Please be seated.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the invocation given by Chaplain Captain Wayne McRae, United States Navy. Taking the reviewing stand is the reviewing official for today's ceremony. Outgoing Senior Enlisted Advisor to the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, John W. Troxell, accompanied by Command Chief Master Sergeant Ramon Colon Lopez, the incoming Senior Enlisted Advisor to the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, followed by the host, General Mark A. Milley, 20th Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, with special guest for today's ceremony, General Curtis M. Scaparotti, United States Army, retired. Would you please bow your heads with me in prayer? The wisdom of Scripture tells us that leaders need guidance to wage war, and that victory is won through many advisors. With this truth as our backdrop, we recognize the importance and value of the senior enlisted advisor to the chairman, the advocate for those matters that impact our enlisted joint force. Almighty God, we thank you this morning for Chief Master Sergeant Colon Lopez, and ask your blessing, wisdom, and strength as he accepts this responsibility of connecting to, representing, and being a strong voice for our joint force. May his insights and advice always be inspired by you and driven by his concern for our people. May he enjoy your blessing throughout the tenure of his office. And Father, as we reflect upon Command Sergeant Major Troxell's time as a senior enlisted advisor to the chairman and the benefit he has wrought upon the joint force, we cannot help but see behind it the challenging combat tours and the many years worth and variety of Command Sergeant Major tours he brought into this position with him. His contributions and sacrifices over the years, as well as those of his wife and family, undoubtedly are more than many of us can fully appreciate. It is our prayer that you bless Command Sergeant Major Troxell and his wife Sandra with a gift of many fruitful and happy years ahead, filled with peace and the joy of their children and grandchildren. Amen. Please be seated.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the advancing of the colors and remain standing for the playing of the United States National Anthem.
Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, Command Chief Master Sergeant Colon Lopez will be sworn in as the fourth senior enlisted advisor to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Hey, um, before I swear uh, CZN, which will happen in just a second, when he puts his hand on the Bible, I want to say a word to remind us all uh, what CZ is about to do. Uh, and the reason he's putting his hand on the Bible is because it's sacred. Uh, and he is about to take a sacred oath. And uh, this is, I don't know, 189, 190 countries or something like that uh, in the United Nations, uh, many of whom are represented here, by the way, today. Uh, but we, the United States of America, we, the military of the United States of America, we're the only country that I know of whose military uh, takes an oath uh, not to a king or a queen or a person or a tribe or a president or a leader or a piece of dirt or or whatever, uh, we take an oath uh, to an idea, an idea that's embedded in a piece of paper uh, called the Constitution. And we, those of us in uniform and those who have served before us from 1775 to today, uh, we swear an oath to die, to die for this idea, to suffer grievous wounds for this idea, to separate from our families in service and sacrifice for this idea. And it's a very powerful idea. It's an idea that gave birth to our country. It's an idea that's been emulated by countries around the world and peoples around the world in the last 244 years. It's an idea that's feared by our enemies. The Nazis hated it. The Imperial Japanese hated this idea. The fascists of Italy hated this idea. The communists hated it. ISIS hates it. Al-Qaeda hated it. And what is this idea that's so powerful that people want to emulate and others fear so much? And they don't hate you because of who you are. They hate you because of this idea. And all the idea is, it's a very simple idea. And it says that you and I, no matter who we are, whether we're male or female, whether we're black or white or Asian or Indian, or no matter what the color of our skin, no matter whether we're gay or straight, Catholic, Protestant, Muslim, Jew, or choose not to believe at all, none of that matters. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, famous or common. What the idea says is that under these colors of red, white, and blue, every single one of us is an American, and every single one of us is born free and equal, and you're gonna rise like CZ Rose, based on your knowledge, your skills, your attributes, your talent. And you're going to be judged by the content of your character, not the color of your skin. That's the very essence of the idea of a document called the U.S. Constitution, for which CZ is about to reaffirm his oath, his willingness to die for that idea. So that I would ask that all of you who are in uniform here today, or those of you who are retired, I would ask that you silently repeat the oath to yourself and recommit yourself to the cause for which we fight. CZ, if you'd place your hand on the Bible and raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, state your full name. I, Ramon Colon Lopez. Having been appointed the Senior Enlisted Advisor to the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Having been appointed the Senior Enlisted Advisor to the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America. 
the Constitution of the United States of America. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And I take this obligation freely. And I take this obligation freely. Without mental reservation. Without mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will and faithfully. And that I will and faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the office upon which I am about to enter. Of the office which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, CAC. Thank you. Mrs. Janet Colon will present Siak Colon Perez Lopez with the new senior enlisted advisor to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff Insignia. General Milley will present SIAC Colon Lopez with the positional flag of the Office of the Senior Enlisted Advisor to the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. At this time, General Scaparotti will now present the Defense Superior Service Medal. The Defense Superior Service Medal is awarded to Command Sergeant Major John W. Troxell, United States Army. Command Sergeant Major John W. Troxell, United States Army distinguished himself by superior meritorious service in a position of significant responsibility as the senior enlisted advisor to the 19th and 20th chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff from December 2015 to December 2019. Throughout this period, Command Sergeant Major Troxell provided trusted and insightful guidance to the chairman on a vast array of complex military initiatives and long-term personnel issues. Serving as the senior enlisted member within the Department of Defense, he enhanced inter-service communication that forged unified and collective recommendations regarding enlisted matters and troop welfare. As a key representative of our nation's military, he traveled extensively in direct support of our deployed forces and developed lasting relationships with our allied and coalition forces worldwide. Most notably, he continued the success of the International Senior Enlisted Seminars and was the catalyst for the establishment of senior enlisted advisors for several foreign military armed forces. Additionally, he developed and championed initiatives for the Joint Force with Joint Force Fitness and improvements to Joint Enlisted Professional Military Education. 
In an era of increased readiness and operational requirements, he was a steadfast advocate for our nation's commitment to continue and improve military benefits, family support programs, and enlisted opportunities. The distinctive accomplishments of Command Sergeant Major Troxel culminate a long and distinguished career in the service of his country and reflect great credit upon himself, the United States Army, and the Office of the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Signed, General Mark A. Milley, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. General Scaparotti will now present the Presidential Certificate of Appreciation. The citation reads as follows. Command Sergeant Major Troxel, I extend to you my personal thanks and the sincere appreciation of our grateful nation for your contribution of honorable service to our country. You have helped maintain the security of the nation during a critical time in its history with a devotion to duty and a spirit of sacrifice in keeping with the proud traditions of the military service. I trust that in the coming years, you will maintain an active interest in the armed forces and the purpose for which you served. Those who follow in your footsteps will draw inspiration from your commitment, dedication, and sacrifices made to ensure the protection of our American freedoms. My best wishes to you for happiness and success in the future. Signed, Donald J. Trump, Commander-in-Chief. General Scaparotti will now present the Certificate of Retirement from the Armed Forces of the United States of America. To all who shall see these presents greeting, this is to certify that Command Sergeant Major John W. Troxell, having served faithfully and honorably, was retired from the United States Army on the 31st day of March, 2020. Signed, General James C. McConville, United States Army Chief of Staff. General Scaparotti is presenting the United States flag to Siak Troxel, retired, for his faithful service to our country. The Department of Defense Distinguished Public Service Award is being presented to Mrs. Sandra Troxel. Mrs. Sandra Troxel is recognized for distinguished public service in support of all service members of the United States Armed Forces and their families from November 2015 to December 2019. During this period, Mrs. Troxel's patriotism and sincere personal involvement in the welfare of the members of the military community earned her deep respect from our service members and their families. As a devoted ambassador of goodwill and a model example for the spouses of all soldiers, sailors, Marines, airmen, and Coast Guardsmen, she was an untiring advocate for the improvement of the quality of life of our men and women in uniform. Of particular note, her presence on innumerable trips to visit both our stateside bases and overseas deployment areas served as a constant reminder of the steadfast commitment to our personnel and reflected a total devotion and unconditional commitment to the values cherished within the military community. This dedication was further displayed in her support of the United Service Organization, United Through Reading, the Robert Irvine Foundation, Gold Star Families, wounded warriors, and various spouses clubs. The distinctive accomplishments of Mrs. Troxel reflect great credit upon herself, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the Department of Defense, and our nation. Signed, General Mark A. Milley, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. General and Mrs. Scaparotti will present Mrs. Troxel with a Certificate of Appreciation Citation. To all who shall see these presents greeting, 
This is to certify that Mrs. Sandra Troxell, on the occasion of the retirement of your spouse from the United States Army, has earned grateful appreciation for your own unselfish, faithful, and devoted service. Your unfailing support and understanding helped to make possible your spouse's lasting contribution to the nation. Signed, General James C. McConville, United States Army Chief of Staff. In lieu, <laughs> In lieu of flowers, Siak Troxel retired and Mrs. Troxel have made donations to a Soldier's Child Foundation, United States. In lieu of flowers, Siak Colon Lopez and Mrs. Colon have made donations to Fisher House. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the posting of the colors. Post the colors. Stand. Right. Tight. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, General Milley, the 20th Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Hey, good morning uh, to everybody, and I appreciate everybody uh, making the trip here. And I know we have many dignitaries. Uh, there's many general and flag officers and, of course, Sergeants Major. Uh, but I want to particularly welcome uh, General Joe Dunford, the 19th. Uh, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and his great wife, Ellen, for being here. Uh, they flew down from the Holy Land of Boston, in case anyone's wondering what that is. Uh, I appreciate them both being here. Uh, he failed to warn me what my first 60 days would be like, so I went to Congress yesterday and I asked for unanimous consent to bring General Dunford back on active duty. So what do you think? But uh, thanks, uh, uh, Chairman, for being here, and Ellen, uh, thank you. And I also uh, want to thank our current and great uh, Vice Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, John Hyten, General John Hyten, uh, for being here. Thank you so much, uh, Vice, for being here.
Uh, as you may have figured this out, uh, CZ is from the Air Force. So it is fitting that we have the Chief of Staff of the United States Air Force, General Goldfein, is here. So thank you, uh, Fingers, for being here. And, you know, normally, or in everyday thinking, a lot of times uh, we say Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine. But we're a joint force, and I just got back from a trip overseas, and there was a hell of a lot of Coast Guard patrolling the waters in the Middle East. So I want to thank not only Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine reps that are here, but also the Coast Guard. And we have the Commandant of the Coast Guard here, Carl Schultz. Thank you, Carl, for being here. And I want to thank all the family members and friends of uh, Sergeant Major Troxel, SEAC Troxel, and, and Chief Lopez, Colon Lopez. It's a privilege uh, to have all of you uh, join us. And I know many of you uh, traveled from great distances to be here. So uh, thank you. And, and I want to particularly welcome our allies and partners are here. There are 24 senior enlisted leaders uh, from 24 different countries uh, representing our allies and partners. And the United States uh, does not fight alone. One of the great strengths of the United States military in combat operations or in peacetime uh, is the strength of our allies and partnerships around the world. And the fact that 24 literally traveled from all over the globe uh, to be here today is a testament to the strength of our allies. So thank you all for being here today as well. And with us today are two very special groups of people. Uh, Gold Star families uh, represented by Danny and Mary Jane Craig and Jane Horton, who have personal relationships with the loss of their loved ones, Sergeant Major Troxel. And we also have two Medal of Honor recipients, Flo Groberg's here and uh, Mass Sergeant Leroy Petrie's here. And we're incredibly humbled to have you all uh, join us. You represent, both of you, the Gold Star families and our Medal of Honor recipients. Uh, you represent all of our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, Coast Guardsmen, and all of our families. You are literally the living embodiment of all that is good about America and the service and sacrifice of wearing the cloth of our nation. So thank you all for being here. And as, as everyone knows, Fort Myers is a special place, a special history, not only for the Army and for the military, but uh, for the entire nation, really. And standing before you in formation are the soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen who represent that history. So join me in recognizing these wonderful men and women who represent over two million Americans currently serving in uniform today. They're remarkable and they represent the incredible talent and skill of the entire Joint Force. In fact, our Joint Force today is incredible. It's strong, and it's only getting stronger. And the only way to explain that is the extraordinary work of our people. Our men and women are on freedom's frontier, on the ground, at sea, in the air, in space and cyberspace, protecting our way of life 24-7. American troops, day in and day out, are out there with uncommon competence, character, and commitment. And we are blessed, we are truly blessed as a nation to have these young men and women. They make us all so immensely proud. And it is our solemn duty to take care of them, no matter what. They are our nation's finest resource. No one in uniform knows that more than our two non-commissioned officers that we are honoring today. Our NCOs have an important role, a fundamental role, that ensures America's military remains the most capable and most powerful military in the world. They are literally the backbone of the joint force, and no one is more professional than an American sergeant, an American staff sergeant, an American Chief Petty Officer, an American Chief Master Sergeant, an American non-commissioned officer. They are the keepers of the standard. They are the keepers of knowledge, of expertise, 
NCOs are our subject matter experts. They teach us and lead our junior soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen how to stay alive in the incredible complex environment of combat. NCOs are across the Joint Force, approving their competence every day, from the waters out in the Pacific to the Euphrates River Valley to the mountains of Afghanistan and everywhere in between. Our NCOs are maintaining the standards of excellence and leadership day in and day out. But competence and leadership are just the entry ticket to being an American NCO. NCOs must have something else. They must have character to match that competence. They must have the integrity and the fortitude to keep our forces on the path of true north. They are leaders like Sergeant Major Troxell and Chief Master Sergeant Colon Lopez, leaders who represent the enlisted ranks that are well over 80 percent of that 2.1 million in uniform. Both of them represent all the men and women, and both of them epitomize the word competence. Four years ago, Sergeant Major Troxell, SEAC Troxell, took the flag and embarked on a mission to improve the health of the force through physical fitness, mental fitness, and spiritual fitness that make the whole and well-balanced warfighters that we are. He committed himself to improving professional education across all the services, advocating for opportunities in civilian schools, along with advanced training and education in specific MOS skills. SEAC Troxel also dedicated himself to working with allies and partners, specifically advocating for senior enlisted advisor and non-commissioned officer development in over a dozen countries. So our major, during your four years at the SEAC, and more importantly, during your entire career in the military, which will be covered by SCAP in just a few minutes, you have touched the lives of countless of troops that have served our country. And you've done it with extraordinary grace, talent, and skill. And Sandra, you have served right alongside Sergeant Major for every step of the way since 1983. And you have tirelessly committed yourself to helping our military families. On behalf of everyone who's here and everyone who's ever served under your leadership, thank you both for a lifetime of incredible service and sacrifice, both in peacetime and in combat. And we all wish you the best of luck in the future. And although we're saying goodbye to one great SEAC, it's my pleasure to welcome our fourth SEAC, Air Force Chief Master Sergeant, now SEAC, CZ Colon Lopez. Chief hails from Puerto Rico. And at the age of 13, at the age of 13, he moved to the Holy Land of Bridgeport, Connecticut. Yes, he is a card-carrying member of the Red Sox Nation. Publicly, publicly, of course, he says he's a Yankees fan. But just last night, and this is true, just last night he sought out a local priest and he went to confession and I was witness. And the priest said, say three Hail Marys and an Our Father for publicly lying about the Yankees. And in fact, this morning he confessed to me personally that all his life he has been a closet Red Sox fan. So thank you. Thank you, CZ, for doing that. And thank you for your candor and honesty. And CZ's wife, Janet, welcome to you. And thank you for your service and support to our military family over so many years. And many of you may not know it, but Janet herself served eight years in the United States Air Force and knows full well the challenges that our families face. So Janet, thank you for signing up. So CZ is going to be our first airman as a SEAC, and I personally selected him through a rigorous uh, process and interviewed many, many sergeants majors across the Joint Force. And I will tell you the one thing that I came away with was we have incredible sergeant majors across the Joint Force, incredible senior enlisted of every branch, and I did every branch and multiples in every branch. And we have an incredible group of senior NCOs. And I picked 
uh, CZ, uh, not because um, any other was necessarily uh, less than. It was that I thought that CZ represented all that was good in all of our non-commissioned officers of all uh, branches. And I think that CZ epitomizes the traits I mentioned earlier about competence and character. He's a warfighter, a career pararescue specialist, a PJ. Uh, CZ joins us from command over in Africa. So he's got great time at the joint level. He's smart, he's dedicated, he's straightforward, he's completely honest, he's never afraid to speak truth to power. He's one of the most professionals in uniform that I've ever met, and I've only met him for a short period of time. As a PJ, he served throughout the Air Force and Joint Special Operations Command, JSOC. He's deployed numerous times in support of seven named operations throughout the world. He's endured the crucible of ground combat, having earned the Bronze Star for valor, for personal heroism. And through it all, CZ was a teammate whose skill, determination, and work ethic was a standard that others used to measure themselves. He has both the competence and the character, the depth and the breadth of experience, and the education and demonstrated judgment that make him the absolute right leader in the right position at the right time. One colonel who knows him very well describes Chief as a weapon system with a track record of success that is unmatched. He said that CZ is disciplined and action-oriented. He's a driver and a teacher, a mentor for all, both enlisted and officer, to follow. And he understands our job is to fight and win, not sit back and lose. So CZ, we are excited. We are excited to welcome you and Janet to the team. And I look forward, and Holly looks forward, to working with both of you to address the challenges ahead of us. America's military, in, in my view, is in good shape. America's military has momentum. And over the next several years, CZ, you're going to help all of us build upon that momentum. We have incredible capabilities, and we are resting on the shoulders of those who came before us. Our joint force today is lethal. It is modern. It is unbeatable in the world. We are the best trained, best equipped, and best led military in human history. And put another way, in an era of great power competition, it is my belief that our armed forces are on the right path. And our purpose is to prevent great power war by preserving great power peace. And we're going to do this through strength, through a ready Army, a ready Navy, a ready Air Force, a ready Marine Corps, a ready Coast Guard. And we're going to do this with leaders like CZ. No enemy is going to ever dare to challenge the United States of America in armed conflict. Why? For a lot of reasons. But one of the big reasons is our non-commissioned officer corps. The competence, the character, the commitment is absolutely second to none, as exemplified by both of these two great NCOs that we honor today. Thank you both for your service and sacrifice. Thank you all for being here today and honoring these two dedicated warriors. God bless you all. God bless the United States military, and God bless America. Ladies and gentlemen, General Scaparotti. Well, good morning. It's great to be here and a great day to be in our military. Chairman, General and Mrs. Mark Milley, and the 19th Chairman, General Dunford and Ellen, great to see you. Thank you for coming today.
Vice, Service Chiefs, General Officers, great to see you all again, and thank you for sharing this big day with us. To the Gold Star families, our Medal of Honor recipients, welcome and thank you for coming today as well. And then to this iconic group of senior enlisted leaders we have here, <clears throat> many of the uh, COCOM senior enlisted leaders, service senior enlisted leaders, and allied senior enlisted leaders. In particular, 4th SEAC, Colonel Lopez, congratulations. Stick with the Yankees, buddy. <laughs> and family and, and friends of the Troxel family, welcome. Thank you for sharing this very special day with uh, Sergeant Major Troxel and with Sandra. Without delay, I also want to recognize one more time the soldiers, sailor, airmen, and Marines, and the Coast Guard who are standing in this magnificent formation to your front. I'm sure you agree these service members are all credibly sharp this morning, and they make us proud to be Americans every time we witness this formation. It represents, in my view, the soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, the Coast Guardsmen, the Command Sergeant Major Troxel has had the honor to serve with and lead over the years. Let's thank these service members for their discipline and professionalism on full display here today. One more time, please. <laughs> this ceremony conducted in the tradition of our military as our nations and for those of us attending, our collective recognition of Command Sergeant Major Troxel's nearly 37 years of faithful and significant service. My purpose today is to highlight not only his service and sacrifice, but to make clear that his service culminating in his selection and duty as the SEAC is a testament to his exceptional service and remarkable skills, knowledge, and character. Here we recognize a Command Sergeant Major and Senior Enlisted Leader that exemplifies what it takes to go all the way. And the true north of his success, in my view, Command Sergeant Major John Wayne Troxell is a genuine leader by example, who drove himself to be prepared for the worst of days, who cared about those he served and inspired all around him, both junior and senior. Command Sergeant Major Troxell says that he entered the Army because he had watched older childhood friends from his hometown of Davenport, Iowa, join the service and return home on leave, much more confident, respectful, and motivated. John Wayne Troxell just wanted to be like them. Like most of us soldiers for life, he didn't enter the Army with a plan to be a soldier for life. But fortunately, when it came time to re-up, Sandra provided the encouragement to keep this young soldier with so much potential in the Army. Sandra, the nation thanks you. Your husband entered the Army in 1982, and 37 years later, he's the last man standing on active duty from the Sergeant Major's Academy Class of 51. He is among the less than 1% of his peers who made the rank of Sergeant Major and that of, that of a similarly select group in each of our services, and then was tapped to be the third senior enlisted leader and advisor to the chairman, a truly remarkable career. And Ken, Command Sergeant Major Troxell would be the first to tell us that he didn't do this on his own. His stepfather, Ben, and his mother, Carol, set him up for success, in his words, in the Army. Sergeant Major told me that he grew up in a loving family and his parents raised him to stand on his own two feet, to be accountable, and to always strive to do his best. And his sister Kay, here with us today, said that their mother taught us that life will not be handed to you. So you go out in the world and you make it what you want it to be. Command Sergeant Major's stepfather, Ben, sadly passed away in 2016. But his mother, Carol, is watching this in a streaming video, I'm sure. And Carol, Thank you for the extraordinary leader that you and your husband raised. Of course, there's Sandra, or Shorty Troxel, as she's affectionately called or known by those of us. Well, Command Sergeant Major Troxel was a private, newly assigned to Fort Bliss, Texas, his first duty station when he met Sandra certainly the love of his life. They were married in September of 83, and this fall they celebrated their 36th wedding anniversary. Who? Cool. <laughs> 
Sandra, thank you for all you've sacrificed in support of Sergeant Major's service, for your selfless service to the Army spouses and their families over the years, and most recently, for support of all the services in the past two tours, for your energy and voluntary assistance to the service members' families and their organizations that support them, for your voice for their comfort in difficult times, and for your voice for them and their communities and commands. Sandra's known for her energy and pragmatic, pragmatic personality, also her hospitality. Now that, coupled with Sergeant Major's karaoke machine, uh, <laughs> is appreciated by all, and I and many others have had great memories of good times in their quarters. Sandra, Sergeant Major's success is every bit your success as well, and on behalf of a grateful nation, thank you. Together, Command Sergeant Major Sander also nurtured a great Army family with three sons. Daniel, Michael, and Brian endured the many separations and the many moves common among military kids. They frequently experience new schools and making new friends. They know well the smell, that we all know that, of a house full of moving boxes and the thrill of getting their own military ID. In fact, in one year, they attended three different high schools, Fort Drum at Fort Polk and Fort Lewis. Daniel, Michael, and Brian, thank you for your love and support in enabling your dad's service to our nation. Family is so important to the Troxels that I must also note that their grandparents are four wonderful and properly spoiled grandchildren. As supporting documentation to all I've said uh, about the importance of family here, I will summon all of you who are Facebook friends with the Troxels. Because if you are, you know first that John Wayne Troxel and Sandra are in love. You know second that they love their children and their grandchildren, and that's shown all the time. And you also know precisely the torturous p and &E hard workout that Sergeant Major did that morning. <laughs> you have Sergeant Major's bio, but let me share a few of his experiences that I believe shaped him. In the course of almost 37 years of service as a cavalryman and senior enlisted leader, Command Sergeant Major spent 27 of those years in combat units and 19 years time and grade as a Command Sergeant Major. 27 years in combat units and 19 years time and grade as a Command Sergeant Major. Nine of those were overseas in Germany and Korea. And of particular note, Command Sergeant Major served nearly four years in combat zones, beginning with a combat jump into Panama, participation in the Desert Shield Desert Storm, two tours in Iraq, and a tour in Afghanistan. In fact, Sergeant Major Troxell has been around so long that he is the last soldier on active duty who fought the famous M551 Sheridan tank in combat. Cool. All right. We've got the cab up here. For anyone with any time and proximity to our Army, you know that there's a certain spirit, sometimes irritating to those who haven't had the experience, to our CAV and our airborne units. And Camp Command Sergeant Major Troxell has spent most of his time in CAV and airborne units. So he grew up in units with that spirit, those who trained to be in first and out front in battle. Command Sergeant Major Troxell's well-known drive to endure adversity and his tenacity in accomplishing any task was a product of this experience. And I would add that if you are privileged, as I've been, to have spent some good PT time or PME hard time with Sergeant Major Troxell, then you know personally the drive and tenacity that I describe, and probably your body reminded you of it after the PT session. After basic training, Private Troxel reported the 1st Squadron, 3rd Armored Cavalry Regiment at Fort Bliss in 1983. While learning to be a scout, he also became a father with the birth of Daniel in March of 84. And soon after Daniel's birth, the Troxels moved to Gillenhausen, Germany. And here we see clear indication of his potential as a young soldier, as he was selected from his battalion to be a recon leader in the 3rd Battalion, 33rd Armored Battalion's scout platoon. Oh, his squad leader and later platoon sergeant was Master Sergeant Pete Hyman, who Command Sergeant Major Troxel Kittitz with teaching him, by his personal example, how to be a professional non-commissioned officer. Also, it was during this time that Sandra convinced her husband to re-up for station of choice Fort Bragg, North Carolina, which you know is the home of the 82nd Airborne Division, and I might add the center of the universe. 
Sergeant Troxell would spend nine years of his career at Bragg in the 82nd Airborne Division, which he claims was his most enjoyable assignment, but I would wager was also one of the most developmental of his career. And this time, Sergeant Troxell moved into the senior NCO ranks. He earned his spurs as a tank commander and as a platoon sergeant in 3rd Battalion, 73rd Armored Battalion, and later as a 1st Sergeant in both Alpha Troop 373 and Alpha Troop 1st 17th Cav. While at Fort Bragg, he graduated from Ranger School, Jump Master School, and Pathfinder's course, each indicators of his voluntary drive to learn and to be the best. And during his Bragg tours, he first experienced combat, making that combat jump into Panama on 20 December 1989, and again in Desert Shield, Desert Storm, where he was a tank commander in Charlie Company 373 Army. And I would note that Charlie Company was recognized as a valorous unit for extraordinary heroism during ground combat operations in that conflict. And it was at Bragg that one of his influential mentors, Command Sergeant Major, retired Roger Blackwood, his first sergeant at the time, taught him to lead by example in everything and how to be comfortable with discomfort, a trait that is most remarkable about Sergeant Major Troxell to this day. Also, another great leader and mentor, Command Sergeant Major Ron Reagan, taught him how to drive consistently to high standards and not to settle for anything less but his soldiers' very best. And significantly, while stationed in Fort Bragg, Michael was born in December of 87 and Brian in July of 1990. After selection and completion of Sergeant Major's Academy in 2001 and a brief tour as a mission planner in JTF-6 at Fort Bliss, he was promoted to Sergeant Major. Now, that's just 18 and a half years after he entered the Army at Fort Knox, Kentucky. He was then assigned to be a Command Sergeant Major for 317th Cav at Fort Drum, where he would learn and lead as a squadron Command Sergeant Major for two years, and that included 10 months in combat in Iraq. Following this assignment, Command Sergeant Major Troxell immediately moved up to become the Command Sergeant Major for 2nd Strike Cavalry Regiment at Fort Polk and provided the wide, wise leadership required during the regiment's move to Fort Lewis. This was on a compressed timeline. In fact, Sergeant Major told me he was notified of the move as they drove through the gate to Fort Polk to report. They stayed there four months, packed up again, and moved their family. So change was the norm during the next three years at Fort Lewis as well. 2SCR became the 4th Striker Brigade Combat Team. And then they were called on early and unexpectedly for deployment to Iraq as the Surge Brigade No. 4 in what would be a very challenging 15-month tour in combat. His Division Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major, retired Roger Blackwood, said Sergeant Major Troxell provided one of the finest examples of combat leadership he had seen the kind of leadership that many aspire to be. 4-2 Striker Brigade was fortunate to have this experienced combat veteran as its senior NCO in the most difficult of times, times that Sergeant Major Troxell claims to be his most challenging as a leader, and I would submit was among the most significant contributions as a leader as well, providing his experience, tenacity, and calm leadership by example. In short, Troxell being his best on the worst of days. In 2008, Sergeant Major Troxell began a journey of senior enlisted leadership positions that provided him the breadth of experience that is truly rare among our nation's senior enlisted leaders and prepared him to excel later as a theater senior enlisted leader and as the SEAC. As the Command Sergeant Major of the U.S. Army Armor Center at Fort Knox, Command Sergeant Major Troxell influenced and gained experience in training and development of armored soldiers the Army Training and Doctrine Command, as well as the leadership and issues of running a major installation. His performance and clear potential led to his selection as the Sergeant Major of the Army Accessions Command, providing another unique experience in senior leadership at service major command level. It was during his tour with the Accessions Command that I interviewed and selected Command Sergeant Troxell to be the U.S. Army's first Corps Command Sergeant Major. At the time, I was preparing the Corps headquarters, which had just returned from Iraq to deploy in less than a year to Afghanistan. I needed an exceptional warrior leader as the Corps Command Sergeant Major, and one that would set the example for the soldiers of the 10 brigades in the 1st Corps and at Joint Base Lewis McCord, but also one that would set the example of the ISAF Joint Command in Afghanistan, a NATO combined command consisting of 38 nations conducting combat operations. 
myself a son of an Army Master Sergeant, I consider the SEL selection to be a significant decision by a commander. And with the right senior enlisted leader, a powerful influence and critical source of unvarnished feedback in a, on the command's environment, the unit, and its training. Without a doubt, one of the best decisions I made was selecting Command Sergeant Major John Wayne Troxell as our first Corps and ISAF Joint Command Senior Enlisted Leader. Sergeant Major Troxell had a profound impact on the troops of First Corps, setting a standard for challenging PT, often including telephone poles, chains, and truck tires, and other things he picked up along the way. Revising the Blue Book that outlined the soldier standards for Corps and ensuring high standards among the NCOs. For example, he executed and personally led the Mangadai Warrior Challenge, a grueling three-day three tactical exercise for the senior enlisted leaders of the Corps. Upon his departure of 1st Corps, a poll of the 1st Corps soldiers found the most common descriptor of Command Sergeant Major Troxel when asked to be inspiring. And the second most common was charismatic. And that tells you something about this Sergeant Major. During the year in Afghanistan, he was equally as impactful with the multinational troops of ISAF Joint Command. His masterful understanding of the different U.S. service cultures, and most important, the cultures of the 38 Allied Nations, was key to our synchronization in combat. Most beneficial to me was Command Sergeant Major Troxell's insight into command, our operational effects, and the views of the subordinate commanders, NCOs, and our troops. In the Troxell way, he was rarely in the headquarters. Sergeant Major Troxell, note this, walked patrol with an element of every combat battalion or equivalent type unit in, in Afghanistan during that year. That's really phenomenal. And it's a testament to his exemplary leadership and his willingness to share the risk in order to know his soldiers and their needs. As many of you know, I asked Command Sergeant Major Troxel to serve with me once again when I took command, the Combined Forces Command, UN Command, and U.S. Forces Korea in 2013. Again, Command Sergeant Major Troxel demonstrated his ability to continue to develop his skills and expand his experience to excel as a senior enlisted leader at a multinational theater level. During these years, we experienced, we experienced several crises on the Korean Peninsula requiring a fight tonight readiness of ROC and U.S. forces and a strong alliance. Command Sergeant Major Troxell's ability to influence the coordination between the U.S. and ROC forces, to improve interoperability and inspire a closer working relationship between the ROC and U.S. senior enlisted leaders, I believe was groundbreaking. And he gave new meaning to the motto, Kachi Kapshi Da, or We Go Together, with his ROC U.S. Mangadai exercises in the rugged mountains of Korea. Since September 2015, Command Sergeant Major John Wayne Roxel has served as the third senior enlisted advisor to the chairman. Sergeant Major Troxel's example as a warrior and professional non-commissioned officer for all service members has been prominent and influential. A skilled communicator, he's been an accurate and active voice for our service members and their families, and an extremely effective advisor to the chairman and senior defense officials on health and development of the joint force and a powerful voice in communicating our Chairman's and the Secretary of Defense's priorities to the force. Additionally, Command Sergeant Major Troxel earned the respect of our allies and had a profound effect on their non-commissioned officers and many of their nation's perspective on the value of senior enlisted leaders, as noted by our Chairman. Bottom line is they sought his company and deeply respected his candid and experienced drive. Command Sergeant Major lived by advice that he gave his NCOs throughout, and that is, I quote, we have to set the example by validating our credentials and being that leader who inspires the troops and intimidates the enemy, end quote, John Wayne Troxell. In closing here, I'll call on three other warriors and leaders about his service. The first, representing the COCOM SELs, the Indo-Pacific Command Senior Enlisted Leader, Sergeant Major Anthony Spadero said this, John Wayne Troxell, a good and faithful servant of our nation, has given his all in the pursuit of warfighting excellence and leading with passion, zeal, and alacrity. JWT, what you've done will never be forgotten. You've made an enduring legacy. And then I call on Command Sergeant Major Dever Pettik. He was the former senior enlisted leader of the Croatian forces and most recently the NATO forces senior enlisted leader, representing our allies. 
He had the following to say about Sar Major Troxell's ability to work with and influence the Allied forces. Quote, he passed the test with flying colors and became the best teammate one could ask for. Command Sar Major Troxell has done so much for so many across the Alliance and will be forever a brother to so many of us, end quote. And then finally, I'm going to call on the words of the 19th Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Joe Dunford, who said the following, as the SEAC, John Wayne didn't have a lot of statutory authority, but he had a profound impact on the senior enlisted leadership across the department. Because of his efforts, our enlisted leaders learned from each other and shared best practices in senior enlisted leadership. We developed a very solid succession process for the most senior enlisted joint billets. Our enlisted leaders, personnel, were better informed, and a generation of enlisted leaders learned what right looks like. He had extraordinary influence because of his superb communication skills, his personal example, and the trust he earned at all levels. The SEAC was also a very credible voice with a secretary and across OSD in the Hill. His fingerprints were on the full range of issues affecting the force, end quote. Command Sergeant Major Sandrin, you can depart your last parade today full of pride for your contributions to your service, your families, and our nation's security. You've had a remarkable career, one very few can claim. Be sure that your influence will live on in thousands of service members and family members that you've inspired along the way. And I speak for all of us here and the many who are here in spirit. Well done, Sergeant Major and Sandra. God bless you in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, Siak Colon Lopez. General Milley, General Scaparati, General Dunford, distinguished guests, family, and friends, thank you for honoring us with your presence here today. I also want to give a special thanks to our very own Chief of Staff, United States Air Force, General Golfin, for allowing me to use the historic Air Force Hap Arno Bible for our sworn name. Thank you, sir. John Wayne and Sandra, congratulations on a well-deserved retirement. Thank you for being great friends, and Janet and I wish you the best. It has been an honor, clearly, serving with you. In a conversation with retired Master Sergeant, a Medal of Honor recipient, Leroy Petrie, he said, from the time you're born, you're never alone. Someone is always by your side. Family, friends, teachers, strangers, those to your left and to your right. What I have realized is that the older you get, the more choices for company you have. And those whom you choose as your company will shape the course of your life. My company starts with my family, my sisters, brothers-in-law, nieces, and nephews. I tell you that I love you, and mom would have been proud today. My childhood friends, represented here today by Sergeant Antonio Horta, who is playing with the band? Can you uh, play something? <laughs> it 
we go back to pre-kindergarten. And uh, Command Sergeant Major Daniel Santiago. Daniel, where are you? Good to have you here. Um, then to a few of my teammates, represented here today by my pararescue selection classmates, JJ, Judd, Joe, Bob, and Lee. Sounds like a bunch of musketeers, but trust me, they drink a lot of beer. Thank you for being here today. And also uh, my combat control battlefield leaders like Mike LaMonica and Kyle Stambro. Thank you for being here present today, as well as other special warfare and special, operator, uh, special operators who helped shape who I am today. Next to my mentors, Chief Master Sergeant Retired Ryan Beckman, Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force Roy, Chief Master Sergeant Retired Wayne Fisk, Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force Retired Bob Gaylor, who devoted time in developing also who I am today. So thank you, I am forever in your debt. To my commanding officers, men like General Wolf Davidson, General Jim Slive, and most recently, General Thomas Walhauser. You took a chance on me, trusted me, and gave me full freedom to maneuver. General Walhauser, congratulations on your recent retirement. Janet and I wish you and Gail the best to the family. Semper Fidelis, sir, Semper Fidelis. And now, General Milley, I look forward to serving with you. Our nation, our troops, and our families will be in good hands. Your message to the Joint Force, dated 1 October 2019, has been received loud and clear. And simply stated, sir, we'll go. Together, we will be our allies' best friends and our enemies' worst enemies. To our total force, including our civilians, contractors, and their families. We are fully committed to ensure you have ethical examples as leaders, to ensuring your readiness, being deliberate on your development, and empowering each and every one of you to achieve greatness in the art of war. As your SEAC, I stand ready to be beside you, to your left or to your right, ensuring that you and your families, that you are never alone. To our officers and fellow senior enlisted leaders, our relationship power, collaboration, and trust will serve as the foundation of our military might. I will rely on your advice, expertise, and responsibilities to ensure we do our best for our troops and our families. And lastly, to my wife, Janet. Without you, I am nothing. With you, I have no limits. And together, we can accomplish anything. You, young lady, are the reason that I stand here before this honorable crowd today. Thank you, and I love you. Ladies and gentlemen, Siak Troxel. Well, good morning, everybody. To all our distinguished guests here, Chairman Milley, General Scaparotti, thank you all for making this day so special. 
for CZ and I. General Dunford and Ms. Ellen, sir, thank you so much for your leadership. Uh, it was truly an honor for 45 months being your senior enlisted advisor and your battle buddy. And Ms. Ellen, thank you so much for everything you did to bring Sandra onto the team and treat us both with such respect. Thank you so much. Uh, Vice Chairman, sir, it's great to see you here. We didn't have a long time to work together, but uh, uh, as your, your efforts at U.S. Strategic Command were very important to the safety of this nation, and, and I'm excited that you're now the Vice Chairman, sir. To the uh, Chief of Staff of the Air Force and my neighbor across the street, General Goldfein, sir, thank you so much. Uh, notes from people like you uh, throughout this four years of encouragement were really important to me. Thank you, sir. It's great to see the Commandant of the Coast Guard here. Commandant, thank you for being here. Uh, I'm sure that uh, the MCPOG had to make sure that uh, he followed you to get over here because he could have ended up, you know, out at sea or something, but thank you for being here today. General Nakasone, sir, thank you for your leadership at Cybercom and NSA, and thank you for being here. And then General Waldhauser, this first journey I started, you were the J7, and you gave me some good advice as I came in as a SEAC. And it was great uh, to serve alongside you then and it, as your time at the uh, U.S. Africa Command. And to the Honorable Rob Wilkins, thank you for being here today. Uh, Rob serves on uh, the President's Council for Fitness, Nutrition, and Sport, and has helped me a lot in getting after the total force fitness of the force. Thank you. And to all our other distinguished guests, especially our Medal of Honor recipients, Captain Retired Flo Groberg and Mass Sergeant Retired Leroy Petrie, thank you for being here and absolutely thanks to the Gold Star families that are here, Danny and Mary Jane Craig, who not only are a Gold Star family, but they are close personal friends of Sandra and mine uh, for the past 12 years, and uh, we love you and thank you for being here. And then Jane Horton, who's also a very close friend of Sandra and ours, uh, and uh, thank you for, for being here today as well, Jane. And to my U.S. and international colleagues, where are you at? Dang, those 80-second vets sound louder than you guys, man. You guys ready to go home or something? Thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedules to be here today. And to all of the former service senior enlisted from the Army and the uh, Air Force that are here today, thank you all for being here today. I know Dan Daly is here. I know Jim Roy is here. And to our current Tony Grinston and uh, Chief Master Sergeant Kay Wright, thank you all for being here today. But thank you for coming here today as we welcome in CZ and Janet as CZ assumes the reins as the fourth senior enlisted advisor to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And Sandra and I move on to start our transition into retirement. Are you ready, baby? <laughs> Prior to this event this week, CZ and I hosted my last Defense Senior Enlisted Leader Conference. The DSELC is a body of senior enlisted, which includes all of the U.S. service senior enlisted advisors, and it also includes all of the combatant command senior enlisted advisors, sub-unified command senior enlisted advisors, and select combat support agencies. And it's a body that comes together that gets after the development of our non-commissioned officers and petty officers, but also the health and wellness of the force. Well, this time we open more collaborative uh, enlisted development doors and made it an international conference and we had representation from over 20 partner and allied nations from around the world. Those partners and allies, can you please stand so we can recognize you. You know, I'll, having these people here is so important because we are, we are more than just colleagues. The relationships that we have with these men and women from around the world aren't just transactional, they are transformational, and they are truly our brothers and sisters, so thank you all for being here today. Sandra and I do look forward to continuing our relationships with all of the people I spoke about earlier uh, in the future, but in a different capacity, all right, as a uh, retired a senior enlisted leader and someone that uh, will continue to give back, both of us look forward uh, to continuing to do that as we move on in the future. And don't worry, I'm, I'm going to come back to places like Budapest, Hungary, and uh, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, and I'm going to make it to Ghana and Malawi as well, my brother, so stay tuned. I want to thank the Military District of Washington for putting on this ceremony today and all your support to make this day so special. 
to the troops in formation here. You represent every man and woman, past, present, and future, who have taken or will take the oath to defend our country, freedom, and way of life. You all look great. And to the band, always the band, thank you for your musical artistry that has made this ceremony so special. And finally, to Chaplain McRae, sir, thank you for such a great prayer. You gave such a great prayer, it didn't rain inside this building today, so thank you very much, sir. You know, I first met CZ Colon Lopez in 2013. I was the U.S. Forces Korea Command Senior Enlisted Leader. He was the 18th Fighter Wing Command uh, Chief in uh, Kadena, Okinawa. General Scaparotti and I went to visit, and CZ hosted me for two days. The first thing he asked me to do when we got in that evening, you up for PT the next day? And I said, absolutely. He also asked some of his senior enlisted leaders to join us the next day. And when we got up at oh dark 30 the next morning to go out for PT, there was CZ, there was me, and there was my communications NCO, Staff Sergeant Dustin Morrissey, uh, who is here today. We decided to go out on a run that day. Three went out, only two came back. It sucked being Dustin Morrissey that he had to find his way back when CZ and I got done with PT. Throughout the rest of that trip, he took me out to see all the great things that the wonderful airmen uh, were doing in the 18th Fighter Wing, not only uh, to assist the Japanese Air Self-Defense Forces, but what their role would be for a, a named operation uh, in the Korean Peninsula. And he culminated that, that evening when he and Janet hosted me in a social, and uh, he invited all his senior enlisted leaders out again. And this is when I really realized we had something in common, is uh, the only people drinking beer that night was CZ and I. So there you go, all right? But throughout the years, at his time there, his time at Air Force Central Command, his time as the command senior enlisted leader at U.S. Africa Command, and while I was at USFK and as the SEAC, we continued to build our professional and personal relationships. And I will tell you, our relationship is so sound that the chairman and I just returned the day after Thanksgiving from a seven-country, six-day trip, and as the plane landed at Andrews Air Force Base, I texted CZ and asked if he and Janet made it in safely, he said, yes, we're in the temporary quarters, right next to your temporary quarters. I asked him if he'd be up for an adult beverage that night. He said, yes. We ended up going over to their temps, uh, thinking we were going to have an adult beverage, and I was going to go work on my uh, jet lag. Well, we didn't end up leaving until like 2 o'clock in the morning. So, uh, CZ, you owe me two days of my life back, brother. <laughs> but I can tell you, his ability to develop enlisted leaders, his ability to bring teams together and his ability to influence others to strive for excellence is why CZ Colon Lopez is the absolute right choice to be the fourth SEAC. So CZ and Janet, congratulations on being selected here today. Sandra and I are so proud that you are going to be the next SEAC, but more importantly, we're proud to call you friends. So thank you very much and God bless you both. For Sandra and I, today is a day about reflection, but more importantly about saying thank you to so many people that have had the impact on us for the last 37 years. First to Chairman Milley, sir, thank you so much for your leadership and your support of the non-commissioned officers and petty officers in the enlisted force around the Joint Force. I only made one trip with you, sir. It was seven countries in six days, as I mentioned, but standing behind you and watching your brand of leadership as you were checking on readiness and you were checking on preparedness of not only U.S. forces, but our allies and partners was just something that I, I will cherish forever. So thank you for your leadership, sir. And thank you for having confidence in me these last three months. But most importantly, thank you for making a monumental decision that brings the SEAC position to full fruition and will give it irreversible momentum. And that's approving the distinctive rank insignia that the SEAC will wear and that myself and CZ are wearing today. So thank you so much, Chairman. <laughs> to Chairman Duff Dunford and Miss Ellen, sir, thank you so much for having the faith and confidence in selecting me back in uh, November of 2015 and appointing me four years and two days ago in this building and swearing me in as the third chairman. I learned so much from you over the last four years, sir, throughout our 38 trips together, 
You didn't think I was counting, did you, Chairman? But uh, most importantly, watching you as you implemented the national military strategy and your chairman's risk assessment, and you did things as a global integrator to get after the threats to our nation. And certainly, Sandra and I will remember the times, all the USO tours that we did with you and Miss Ellen, and all the times that you hosted the august body known as the DSELC at your quarters every time we came in. We tried our darndest, sir, to drink all of your beer, but being an Irishman from Boston, that was just not going to happen, sir. So thank you and Miss Ellen so much. We love you very much, and we will consider you friends for life. Thank you. <laughs> to General Scaparotti and Miss Cindy, sir, thank you so much for being my retiring official here today. It was truly an honor to serve with you and Cindy at Joint Base Lewis-McChord, and uh, also to serve with you for a year in combat. And then, as we went from basically phase two to phase five operations in Afghanistan, and to flip that around and kind of be in phase zero to phase one in Korea, it was truly an honor to serve as your senior enlisted advisor. And you know, every time you get selected by a, a selecting official, a general officer, you're always wondering, um, how do I feel my boss out? How do I see what kind of person they're, that they're going to be and what they expect me as a senior uh, enlisted leader? And right after we got selected by General Scaparotti, we moved into quarters right next door. And I had this on my mind the first day that we woke up, Sandra and I, in our new quarters. And all of a sudden, I heard this Harley Davidson out back of the quarters next to me. And I look outside, and there was uh, General Scaparotti in his jeans, his boots, his Harley vest and Miss Cindy getting on the back of the motorcycle with him, and they were taking off down the road. And I said, this is probably going to be a pretty good ride with this general officer here. But sir, four and a half years as your, as your senior enlisted leader, uh, it was truly an honor. And I really appreciate uh, you and Cindy welcoming us in on the team at First Corps, but more importantly, continuing to be great teammates. And I also appreciate you brought up the karaoke machine, that whenever we would have the US and ROC senior enlisted leaders, on the Korean Peninsula that you never passed up an opportunity to come down and sing a few karaoke songs with us. So thank you both very much, and God bless you. <laughs> and to my family, who's traveled so far to be here. First of all, to my big sister, Kay Coyne, my older sister, I should say. But I could say big sister, because she used to kick the crap out of me and my brother when we were growing up. Um, as our mother has uh, come into more trying health, you have taken over the duties of the matriarch of the, this family. And with the passing of our father in 2016, you have continued to be the person that has kept this uh, family going and moving forward. And I also cherish that uh, you spent next year, it'll be 40 years that you have served as a Department of the Army civilian. And you've also deployed to places like Kuwait and Afghanistan. So thank you so much for being the sister that is a role model for me and one of my heroes. But more importantly, thank you for your service to our great nation. Thank you, sis. Now, wait. OK. We're going we're gonna to clap after I say the whole family here. Otherwise, we'll be here till 1,300. And I know the chairman's got to get back after the NDS here. So um, to my brother Tommy and his wife Angela, thank you for being here today. For anybody that's from the west end of Davenport, Iowa, they know growing up in the late 70s and early 80s, the baddest MFer in the west end was my brother Tommy. Countless times I've seen him do things to other human beings with a right cross that would cause them to lose bodily functions or wake up 30 minutes later wondering what they just got hit with. And, but the bottom line, he was my brother, a year older of me, and he took care of me everywhere I went. And when General Scapp talked about those people that went and joined the military and then returned uh, looking more confident, looking sinewy, muscular, and being somebody that I wanted to be, the first person to do that was my brother Tom. So thank you for your service to our nation, brother, and thank you to Angela for being here today. God bless you both. And I can't forget my West End brother, Max Gordon Porter is here, and he brought his mother, Mama Porter, with him. And publicly, Mama Porter, I got to tell you, I apologize for all the times 40 years ago that Gordon, my brother Tommy, and I would show up at your house at Oak Dark 30, um, a little bit inebriated, you know, but uh, sneaking in and trying to get some bologna sandwiches and everything. 
and then you catching us and uh, putting a healthy dose of scunion on us there. But I apologize now that we would wake you up 40 years ago and you'd have to chew our butts. But it's truly an honor for both of you to be here. Gordon, you're a true friend, uh, and, and I love you, brother, and thank you for being here today. And to my mom, who is back in Davenport right now watching this on video. Mom, I would not be where I'm at were it not for you and the caring and loving household you created. You spent most of our formative years for us kids as a single parent, and you had to raise us. And until our stepfather, Ben McDonald, came along and you got married in 1978, you kind of championed the cause of developing us kids to the best that we could be. And I can tell you, Mom, you ought to be proud, because when I look at what Kay has done, when I look at what Tommy has done, and our late brother Eddie, and certainly what the baby has done here, you've done good, Mom. I love you, and God bless you. To my kids, Daniel, Michael, and Brian, and their lovely wives, Maria, Emily, and Andrea, and my four precious grandchildren, David, Melody, Claudio, better known as Little C, Spadaro, I'm going to teach him how to shoot his cuffs, and Stalker, I'm going to teach him how to protect his iPhone when he gets old enough, all right? And to my little Luna Bell, my brand new granddaughter, I love you all so much. You have sacrificed so much because any of us that have served in the United States military understands that when you're serving in an expeditionary military and you're going to deploy and you're going to fight and then you're going to redeploy and then you're going to deploy again and fight again, we can never be the best father or wife, we can never be the best uh, spouse, and we can never be the best grandparent than we could if we had a job uh, nine to five, 40 hours a week. So Sandra and I are looking forward to the immediate future to spend an, a healthy amount of time with our kids and grandkids. And I am looking especially forward to spoiling my grandchildren. And then when they start acting up, I am going to be beaming as I pass them back on to the kids and say, you got the con now, all right? <laughs> and finally to my wife, my soulmate, my best friend, my Sandra. You have been absolutely the best thing that has ever happened to me, and I would not be here were it not for you. You've joined me in this tenure as a SEAC for trips to Iraq multiple times, Afghanistan multiple times, Poland, Turkey multiple times. We've landed and taken off together on an aircraft carrier from a car carrier onboard delivery plane. And in every part of the way, you've been by my side. You supported me in any endeavor, and never once questioned our service. I love you, baby, and I'm excited about our future and the adventures that lay ahead of us. Thank you, baby. So as the SEAC, you serve as the principal advisor to the chairman on all matters involving, involving the Joint Force enlisted personnel. Basically, you provide the pulse of the force to the chairman. You ensure that those at the tactical level understand the operational and strategic direction our nation and military are going. Basically, we provide the why of what we're doing. This suggests an up-and-out approach to duties as the SEAC and gaining that pulse of the force. And in the past four years, I've had the distinct opportunity to travel to 59 different nations and operational areas with a pre repeat offenders in garden spots like Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, Somalia, Yemen, and certainly a garden spot, the Korean Peninsula. I've visited operational institutional bases around the United States. I've had the opportunity to meet and know some of the best partners and allies this nation has had. And I've been able to collaborate with our service senior enlisted advisors and combatant command senior enlisted leaders on professional development and NCO empowerment and I'm most proud, because of the collective work that we have done, that 27 nations now have a senior enlisted advisor to their chief of defense who did not have it four years ago when this collective body started that process. We've developed a global network of senior enlisted who communicate regularly from as far away as Australia and New Zealand, all the way to our NATO and European countries, and all the way to Northeast Asia and Africa sharing best practices and lessons learned on enlisted development. Most importantly, I've had the opportunity to visit the troops all over the world to learn and understand their challenges and that of their families and deliver that information to the chairman, the joint staff, 
the Office of the Secretary of Defense, and other agencies. It's been one hell of a ride. But my true ride in this institution started long before, when I was sworn in and enlisted on the 4th of May, 1982, in the U.S. Army. That day, my sister put me on a bus in Davenport, Iowa, on my way to Des Moines, Iowa, to swear in and become a member of this warrior class. Since then, I've had numerous great experiences, starting with the 3rd Armored Cavalry Regiment. I arrived on 5 January 1983. I met Sandra Jimenez, this pretty little Mexican girl, in a bar when I entered the bar with an, a fake ID to get in. I learned that from the West Enders, so Tom and Gordon, thanks for the help, brother. I met her on the 1st of February 1983. We quickly fell in love. She comes from a traditional Mexican family, and she has 18 brothers and sisters. Her father was from Chihuahua, Mexico, and her mother was from Han Fort Hancock, Texas. And a pasty white guy like me showing up at the door of a traditional Mexican family to ask for their daughter's or their, si their sister's love was kind of challenging. So I had to endure a lot of insults, uh, a lot of abuse and everything, but it certainly prepared me for 36 years of marriage for my wife that really keeps me in line. I moved from there to Germany, the 3rd Battalion, 33rd Armor, the Pickles, best by test. And I know Brian Trueblood is out here somewhere. My platoon leader back then, sir, you were the first officer that had a huge impact on me. And you taught me what it meant to be a professional and how to act professionally at all times. And uh, I just want to thank you for your leadership back then, sir. I really appreciate and I appreciate you being here. But then, I went to Sandra in 1986 and I said, we're going to get out of the Army. And she said, why? I said, I'm tired of watching NFL football at midnight and 2 o'clock in the morning. She said, what are we going to do? I said, we're going to go back to Davenport, Iowa, and we're going to figure it out. She kind of gave me this dirty look, and she wouldn't talk to me for three days. Because she knew that the only thing I knew how to do well was to be a soldier. And so finally, she convinced me to stay in, and I said, OK, I'm going to re-enlist but we're going to go where I want to go. And that's to the center of the universe, Fort Bragg, North Carolina, and the vaunted 82nd Airborne Division. Where are you at, paratroopers? All right. I arrived there and started my tour of duty with the 3rd Battalion, 73rd Armor. There is a Just Cause veteran in here with me, Steve Copening. I appreciate you for being here today. Where are you at, brother? OK, either that or he's at the bar still. but. But also, plenty of these guys served with me in Desert Shield, Desert Storm. And these were my formative years that caused me to grow and develop and to be someone that took pride in being the best at what you could be every day. I then moved back to Germany to the 3rd Squadron, 4th Cavalry, 3rd Infantry Division. And two of my mates from back then, one of my young corporals from my platoon, 1st Army Retired Vince Cunningham is here, and his wife, uh, Angela, where are you guys at? All right, good to see you here. And then Uncle Bougie, Sergeant Keith Giles and his wife. Great to see you, brother, and thanks for educating me that Louisiana is a state, not a country all its own. Thank you very much for being here, brother. Then I made that trek back to Fort Bragg, North Carolina, to the 3rd Battalion, 73rd Armor. And then I also served in 1st Squadron, 17th Cavalry. And I had two very good warriors in that uh, organization with me. One Command Sergeant Major retired, Ray Edgar, who's here with his wife, Sharon. Don't punch anybody, Sharon, all right? And also Command Sergeant Major Tim Matheny and his wife, Betty. Tim is the Resolute Support Sergeant Major in Afghanistan, and I appreciate you for being here today, brother. And then I got selected to go to the Sergeant Major's Academy. Class 51, where you at? <laughs> Phil Jondro, Pat Alston, where you at? All right. Hanging around those guys there in class, it, it really start, set me off on being a, uh, a great uh, sergeant major on what I needed to be doing in my duties. I went to 317th Cav and 10th Mountain, and I got to serve amongst two highly speed, high speed combat veterans and great friends. And Command Sergeant Major Retired Frank Grippy and Command Sergeant Major Retired Ralph Borja, both are here today. Thank you guys very much for being here. And, and Frank, Ralph, and I apologize 
for the days we used to climb the fence in your backyard to steal beer off your back porch. But you kind of got the hint when you put Ranger, your Alaska Malamu, back there, and he would chase us back over the fence. So thank you both so much for being here. And then I got the distinct honor of being selected as a Command Sergeant Major of the 2nd Striker Cavalry Regiment at Fort Polk for a four-month tour. Sandra and I, we put the household goods out like we were going to be there for 40 years. Four months later, we packed up and we went to Fort Lewis. And there, I got to replace someone I call a true friend and a mentor, Command Sergeant Major Retired Blackwood. We then reflagged the 4th Striker Brigade, 2nd Brigade Combat Team. Where I, the Raiders, where I got to serve along great people like Command Sergeant Major Retired Phil Pitch and his wife Patty, who are here today. And then great people like First Sergeant Jerome Vargo and his wife Anita. They're represented here today by their son, Joseph, his wife Samantha, and their baby Anastasia. Where you're at, Vargos, representing. Good to see you here today. Then I went on to the Armor Center and Accessions Command at Fort Knox where repeat offenders like Edgar and Matheny were there waiting on me. And also other people like Command Sergeant Major Retired Carl and Allie Parker became great friends with the, where are the Parkers at here today? All right, I'm not gonna tell the story of the overturned golf cart during the Toby Keith concert, all right? We'll keep that one under wraps, all right? And then General Scaparotti selected me to go to First Corps and I went to IJC where I again met a, a mentor that coached me on how to be a strategic level command senior enlisted leader. He was the ISAF command senior enlisted leader at the time, former command sergeant major of the 82nd Airborne Division, command sergeant major retired Tom Capel. Tom, thank you so much for being here today, brother. And thank you so much for the te teaching and mentoring in combat. I appreciate it. Then I went to USFK. And when they tell you partnering, if, you, if it doesn't hurt when you're partnering, you're not doing it right, that became vivid on the Korean Peninsula, partnering with the Koreans, because I quickly learned that you cannot outdrink or outgift a Korean. But it was one of the most fruitful assignments I had, building that Rock U.S. Alliance, alongside people like Fleet Master Chief Jim and Evelyn Honia, Command Sergeant Major Retired Ray Devins, and Command Sergeant Major Retired Mike Hatfield. Thank you all for being here today. Kachi kapshida, Honias. And then as a position of SEAC, there's been some people that have really helped me. Pat Alston, who I already mentioned, has been my mentor. I've developed great relationships with a guy that used to run the chairman's dining uh, room. Sergeant Major now, Dom DeFada, and his wife Jess, are here, who are here today. Thank you both for being here so much. To other people that support our troops, like Robert Irvine and Justin Leonard, thank you all for being here today. To Benny Wiley, coach, head strength coach of the University of Oklahoma, who works with Alpha Warrior to keep our troops fit, thank you for being here. And to Deb Harris, a nutritionist at the Defense Commissary Agency, who really helps me in getting after food as fuel for our troops. And then there's Team SEAC. Where's my running backs at? Where are you at? You guys better sound off down there, or I'm going to have CZ for an hour extension so we can get some PT in, all right? Thank you all so much, the current and former SEAC members, or Team SEAC members. I tell people, it isn't so much of the person that holds the position that is the power of the position, it's the staff that supports them. So everybody on the current and former SEAC team, please stand so we can recognize you. You know, basically I've had the opportunity to walk in the shoes of great people and great mentors, like Command Sergeant Major Ron Reagan, who was my Battalion Sergeant Major in the 1980s at 373. Very influential. Ron, thank you for your leadership. And I will tell you, what's interesting is that out of the four SEACs, that Battalion Command Sergeant Major raised two of them, the first SEAC and the third SEAC. So uh, up until SEAC 3, you were batting 667 there, uh, Sergeant Major, but you're still batting 500 now, so I think you're still good for the major leagues, all right? But thank you so much for your leadership. To Command Sergeant Major Retired Roger Blackwood, as again, I, I said before, you taught me how to be comfortable with discomfort, how to get after things and to get around the weather, get around the lack of the troops, the lack of resources, 
manage the risk and get after the mission and finish it. You are truly the epitome of what I thought someone should be as a Command Sergeant Major, and thank you so much for being here today, Roger. I appreciate it. And finally, to Master Sergeant Warren Pete Hyman, my first platoon sergeant in 1984. He was a guy that taught me how to be a professional. He taught me how to be an NCO that strove for excellence and how to set the standard every day in appearance, demeanor, and performance. He couldn't be here today. He's since retired from another job where he was a security guard at the JTF North. But Pete, if you're watching in, thank you so much for your leadership, brother. I really appreciate it. These men, along with the environments they created, were the brand of leadership provided me and their brand of leadership provided me an opportunity to grow and develop, and I am forever grateful for that. So today I walk away from this pro profession that I have truly loved, and I will always cherish the memories of the almost four decades of being a servant to our nation. The good, the bad, the unforgiving memories of combat, and the exhilarating moments of reuniting with my family after a combat tour will always be foremost in my mind. I will cherish them all. And as Sandra and I depart from this life, I walk away with no regrets and only thankful that I had the opportunity to serve, that I had the opportunity to serve with the finest people our nation and any nation could produce. Those that swore an oath and said, not on my watch will I allow any threat to impinge on our freedoms and our way of life. As I begin my transition today to civilian life, I do so with a bit of sadness that this life has come to an end. But I go with a smile and pride because I had the opportunity to serve alongside some heavy pipe hitters like these troops in formation who represent our lethal, ready, and fit force that can paint the enemy's houses in a precise military manner anytime, anywhere, and under any circumstances. And that I had the opportunity to serve alongside true American heroes like Corporal Brandon Craig and Specialist Chris Horton and many, many others who made the ultimate sacrifice for our nation and for freedom. We will never forget their last full measure of devotion, and we will never forget the families. So I'll be beaming with pride as I watch the future of our armed forces from afar. And I know this, that regardless of whether it's long-term power competitors or rogue nations who want to spread malign influence, or terrorists with their radical, cowardly attacks, I know alongside our allies and partners, we will be ready to bloody the nose of any threat that wants to take a shot at our freedom. And especially when it comes to terrorists like ISIS, ISIS, I'm sorry, Chairman. I'm sorry, sorry Chairman Dunford. I'm sorry, General Scapp. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, but I've got to say it again. When it comes to ISIS, they've got two options. They can surrender or they can die. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're a peace-loving nation. So if they surrender, we'll treat them humanely, and we will safeguard them to their detainee holding facility cell, provide them chow, a place to sleep and due process. But let there be no doubt that if they choose not to surrender, then we will kill them with extreme prejudice whether that is by, with, and through our partner forces, dropping bombs on them, shooting them in the face, or if need be, beating them to death with our entrenching tools. Thank you all so much. God bless our joint force. God bless our partners and allies. And God bless America. Thank you.
and review.
the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Please remain in place for the departure of the official party. You are invited to congratulate Siak Colon Lopez, Mrs. Colon Lopez, Siak Troxel, and Mrs. Troxel in the receiving line on the main floor. Ushers will assist once the receiving line area is ready for guests. Thank you for attending and enjoy the rest of your day.